Anyone who paid attention to their geography lessons knows that our globe is adorned by seven continents. But what if this official account that we're taught in our childhood isn't true? What at first seems like a crazy theory is a real case for some people. The existence of another secret continent. But how is that even possible? Has this gigantic landmass actually managed to escape human sight for thousands of years? Or is the existence of the hidden continent being covered up on purpose? Today, we'll ponder this theory and many others, so get ready for some strange and bizarre mysterious content. But before we get started, be sure to hit that like button and ring the notification bell for more videos. The Face of the World Centuries ago, our globe was still a mysterious world. In order to find out which undiscovered countries are hiding across the gigantic oceans, daring expeditions into the unknown had to be undertaken. Over the years, people finally managed to erase more and more blank spots from our world map. It's well known, however, that this exciting era of discovery goes back many thousands of years. Today we're at a time when it's easily possible for us to take a look at the other end of the world with just a few clicks of the mouse. In fact, it seems that there are virtually no more mysteries on our planet that we haven't long since deciphered. However, if we delve a little deeper into the matter, it becomes clear to us that the Earth still holds countless puzzles in store, which by far exceed our level of knowledge. For example, what's hidden in the remote areas of the deep sea? What secrets lie dormant in the unexplored parts of the rainforest? Truthfully, we have no clue, as there's still so much of our known world that hasn't been explored. You could easily assume that these are more questions of detail rather than questions of the unknown. After all, these areas have technically been discovered for thousands of years, it's just that they haven't been fully explored. The rough idea that we have of our Earth seems to be fairly well established, but could there be more hiding beneath the surface than meets the eye? Before we devote ourselves to this exciting topic, we should first take a look at another question. What is a continent anyway? At first glance, this question seems extremely simple. By definition, a continent is a closed, large piece of land. In particular, the known continents are Asia, Africa, North America, South America, Europe, Australia, and Antarctica. If we look at the models of the continents that are common today, we quickly see that the experts are anything but unanimous in their definitions. Because of this, it's sometimes also common to divide our world into only four continents, in this case, not only North and South America, but also Asia, Africa, and Europe are viewed as contiguous mainland continents. In some historical models, the Earth was only divided into two different continents. However, what all experts agree on is the fact that a continent must be a landmass that's above the surface of the water. But what if the mainland in question was once dry land, but sank into the tides of the ocean over for the previous millennia. Can we still speak of a continent then? It's precisely this controversial issue that's been dividing the experts into two camps for some time. While one group is unwavering to keep the number of continents unchanged, the other side is pushing for another continent to be added to our globe, Zealandia. Welcome to Zealandia. If we venture into the southwestern Pacific, we'll come across a gigantic piece of strongly stretched continental crust below the surface of the water, which covers an area of 4.9 million square kilometers. However, not all parts of this area are covered by the waves of the sea. Those arid areas that rise out of the water are known today as New Zealand, Stewart Island, New Caledonia, and the Chatham Islands. The first to name this contiguous area Zealandia was the American geologist Bruce Leyendijk. 
However, during the mid-1990s, the researcher didn't pursue the goal of adding Zealandia as a separate continent to the world map. At first, it was just a collective term for the contiguous regions of the continental crust. In the years that followed, however, there were repeated voices calling for Zealandia to be recognized as an official continent. For more than 20 years now, scientists have been arguing about whether or not we should include the underwater continent in the ranks of large land masses. As we all know, our world map has remained unchanged for hundreds of years. While islands are known to come and go all the time, we haven't added or removed a continent from our modern maps for a very long time. Because of this, it can be an understandably difficult task for researchers, historians, and geographers to come to terms with adding a new continent to our map. To make matters worse, there isn't necessarily one agreed-upon method of defining a new continent, as we've never had to do it at any point in human history. We have a general guide of what classifies as a continent, but since we've never been tasked with this issue before, we really don't know how to proceed. As already mentioned, the corresponding landmass has an area of 4.9 million square kilometers. However, only 6% of Zealandia protrudes from the ocean. The remaining 94% is covered by the southwestern Pacific Ocean. About 400 million years ago, however, the situation was completely different. At that time, Zealandia was still a part of the great continent of Gondwana. This gigantic landmass characterized the southern hemisphere of the globe for a period of almost 500 million years, according to the information that's been gathered by geologists. In truth, none of us would have been alive back then, so we can't say for sure what the world would have looked like. However, if the theories of scientists are in fact accurate, an entirely new continent would have been around long before humans set foot on the Earth. Later, Gondwana formed the southern part of the supercontinent Pangaea. So, when Zealandia was still part of Gondwana, the Pacific Plate slowly but surely began to drift towards the eastern border of the greater continent. As a result of this process, layers of sediment were again raised, ultimately creating massive mountain ranges. More than a hundred million years later, however, this process would be reversed. As a result, Zealandia eventually split off from the Australian continent. The so-called Tasman Sea was also created, forming the body of water that's located between New Zealand and Australia today. While the bottom of the Tasman Sea rose steadily over the course of millions of years, Zealandia sank further and further down until the majority of the landmass was finally covered by water. Around 23 million years ago, according to scientific theories, the Pacific Plate collided with the Australian Plate again. In the course of this process, which continues to this day, New Zealand also rose from the ocean's waters. Bear in mind, all of this is just the best guess of the scientific community. That doesn't mean that their efforts and work are any less credible. However, we have to remember that many scientists and historians who study the Earth and try to understand how it would have looked thousands of years ago are trying their best to work with a very limited amount of evidence and information. Most of the scientific methods we rely on these days are little more than theories, as humans simply haven't been around long enough to collect all of the information that we may need in order to provide definite answers to many of these burning questions. However, as time passes by and we continue to analyze more and more data, there's a good chance that our best guesses and timelines will become more and more accurate as we continue to educate ourselves and unearth new discoveries. Zealandia then and now with all this in mind, what did this continent look like all those years ago before it sank into the icy depths? To answer this question, it's worth taking a look at the fascinating fossils that were once found in Curio Bay. 
The bay, which lies off the South Island of New Zealand, houses many petrified tree trunks and even the remains of a fossilized forest. Based on these remnants from bygone days, we can guess what the blooming landscapes once contained in this now-lost area of Zealandia. An in-depth investigation revealed that these ancient trees were closely related to modern kauri trees and Araucaria. But it's not just the relics from the flora that show that Zealandia was once a place where life flourished. In the Otago region, researchers even came across the jaws of a tiny honored mammal. Conversely, this find means that Zealandia protruded from the sea even more extensively during the last ice age than is the case today. Although most of the underwater continent is still largely unexplored, it's very likely that Zealandia is home to numerous mineral resources. It's now known that there are abundant gas and oil wells there. In addition, the experts suspect that Zealandia also has large deposits of iron manganese nodules and sulfide. The existence of iron sand has also been proven in some areas of Zealandia. Iron has been extracted there since the 1960s. The coveted raw material is not only used for steel production, but is also exported to other parts of the world. Is Zealandia a continent? In view of Zealandia's literally turbulent past, a central question arises. Does it make sense to recognize the largely submerged area as an eighth continent? It's precisely this question that the scientific minds cannot seem to agree on. In detail, there are different criteria that a region of the Earth must meet in order to be considered a continent. Above all, this includes the fact that the continental crust must stand out sufficiently from the oceanic crust. At the same time, the continental crust must be thicker than the oceanic crust. But the natural condition of the region in question is also an important aspect. According to this, a continent must have geological diversity and be home to three basic types of rock. Last but not least, the definition of a continent is always a question of size. The corresponding landmass must therefore have a very large area of land in order not to be classified as a microcontinent. How exactly this magnitude is quantified, however, is not determined even in the ranks of scientists. Those in favor of including Zealandia on the official list of continents make different arguments. Since the landmass has a considerable area of almost 5 million square kilometers, it should overcome the specified size hurdle with ease. Because Zealandia is far enough away from Australia, it shouldn't be viewed as a fragment but as an independent region. The narrowest area that separates Zealandia and Australia is a sea trench 25 kilometers wide and over 3,500 meters deep. Although more than 90% of Zealandia is covered in water, it still stands an average of 1.1 kilometers from the bottom of the oceanic crust. In addition, previous studies of the region suggest that the underwater continent also meets the minimum geological requirements. There we find a pronounced variety of rock types made up of granite, slate, and rocks containing silicon. Although the crust of Zealandia is 10 to 30 kilometers thicker than that of the official continents, compared to other oceanic crusts, which are on average no thicker than 7 kilometers, it appears much more massive. All of these arguments would ultimately be incontestable if the continent discussion were not overshadowed by one central fact. Zealandia is largely underwater. However, since it's undisputed that the region was once dry and later split off from Australia before it sank into the sea, we're dealing here with a question of definition. Does a landmass lose its status as a continent if it literally disappears from the surface? Or should it continue to be viewed as a continent even after it's given way to the rising oceans? Even if we don't have an answer for this today, one thing is for sure, scientific minds will continue to debate this issue for many years to come. 
Truthfully, I think we can all most likely agree that Zealandia will not be added to the map any day soon. While the continent may technically exist, the fact that it's hidden underwater seems to secure its fate in terms of it appearing on modern maps. Since the landmass can't be fully explored and is certainly uninhabitable, there would be no reason to add it to our maps other than for the simple amusement of it. But who knows? As time passes by, there's a good chance that the continent may eventually show itself once again and emerge from its watery grave. What do you think of this fascinating underwater continent in the southwestern Pacific? Should we recognize Zealandia as the eighth continent or leave our world map untouched? We're looking forward to your comments. If you enjoyed today's video, please give us a thumbs up. Also, be sure to stick around and hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all of our future uploads.